Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, so this is a video I've needed to make for quite a while, to be honest. This is about uh, <laughs> using calibrated mass air meters on a stock computer and what that ultimately is going to mean for you uh, without a tune. And I'm really, really not a big fan of uh, you know these manufacturers continuing to this day to talk about that like it's a good thing. You should do it. It'll run fine. And encouraging people to do this because it it can work okay when you're going just a little bit bigger than stock it's not too big of a deal uh, but sometimes it, it can really be off by a lot so today we're going to kind of talk about the specifics of what a calibrated mass air meter is and why without a custom tune it's not necessarily going to give you good results and this is a direct response to uh, the, the post i've got pulled up here from zach uh, out in hawaii so basically says that you know he's getting ready to uh, put a blower on the car and uh, but right now it's a relatively stock engine so in preparation for the blower you know he he put some 42 pound injectors on the car uh, and then did some you know heads cam throttle body you know stuff like that and he's using uh deeper in this this thread you'll see he's using a pro m uh, 42 uh mass air meter which which is really common i've used those myself it's a good meter and so he's saying well it runs rich seems to have a little stumble it's falling flat during acceleration you know what's going on so we're going to talk about that. So first thing I want to do is just uh, pull up a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the two different mass air meters. So we're going to look at a bone stock one from, uh, you know, Fox body, and then we're going to look at a mass air meter uh, from, from Pro M42 side-by-side -side so you can get a feel for, you know, at a given voltage, what is the uh, corresponding airflow. So to do that, we're just going to jump in here to EEC analyzer and I've got them pulled up side-by-side. So basically, you know, the, the way the mass air meter works is as the, uh, the sensor detects an increased airflow, the voltage goes up. And at a given voltage, uh, there is an appropriate amount of airflow. In this case, this is measured in kilograms per hour. So this first set right here on the left, this is a stock meter. So you'll notice it kind of pegs up here at about 850 kilograms per hour. And it works its way up. You look on the right side, this is your, your Pro M42. Now, every Pro M42 comes with a calibration sheet. They'll be just a hair different here and there, but in general, this is kind of a, yeah, you know, a simplified version of looking at that. And you'll notice that it has a way higher airflow potential because if you actually need a larger injector, like a 42-pound injector, uh, and it's kind of sized appropriately for the combo, you know, it's assumed that you'll probably get up into this top, top area somewhere of this mass air transfer, so it needs to be able to accommodate that increased airflow. But the thing to look at that's important is the difference when you look at a given voltage uh, side by side. So I put this spreadsheet together, same data. Uh, here on the left, you've got the stock. Right here, you've got the prone calibrated for 42. And the only difference is I took the same data you just looked at, but I normalized it so that we're looking at things at the exact same voltage points throughout. Okay, And the pro -M goes a little bit lower down here uh, where, where I don't have data on that. And the big thing I wanted to show you is if I take this airflow and divide it by this airflow and work my way down, these are the ratios that I get all the way down the curve. And you notice it's pretty consistent. Uh, it kind of hovers somewhere between, you know, 2. Point, you know, 2.1 and, you know, usually about 2.3, 2.4. Uh, and if you think about that, it kind of makes sense. So the, the factory injector was rated at 19.641 uh, pounds. Uh, a flow and the the pro m42 in this case yields a ratio of this so if you have a 42 pound injector stock was a 19.64 pound injector here's the ratio so it's not a coincidence that these are all very close to this ratio right here and if you had a smaller injector say a 24 pound injector your difference would only be you know 1.22 um, or the ratio between the two so what you're basically trying to do is this is a way to to fool the system to try to get the same result. Now going back to this, I want to show you something on the chart. So the red line is your Pro M42, your green line is the stock. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these, these flow numbers on the Pro M and I'm going to divide them by this ratio right here. So 2.13. Uh, and then I'm going to refresh the chart here. 
And notice that when you set these two curves on, on top of each other, they're virtually identical. You know, this one has a little bit more peak up here, so don't worry about that. But as far as the actual curve, these lines are very, very close to overlapping all the way through. And we could go through a similar exercise and really pick any of the Pro M meters. So let's go to a, a Pro M30. Okay, so side by side, you can see the Pro M30 goes quite a bit higher. But if we take the same ratio we calculate this way, take all these airflow numbers and divide that, refresh the chart again, yet again you notice basically an identical curve. So, so the point of these meters is to, the, the calibrated meters is to create a new meter with a higher potential airflow, but with an overall curve that looks very, very similar or nearly identical to a stock meter. But why this is bad is because you're, you're kind of fooling things. So the, the computer, if you don't tune it, it has no idea you've done this. It's just measuring voltages and assuming airflow, measuring voltage and assuming airflow. So your fuel might be kind of close, but your timing is gonna be way messed up because the way the computer calculates your timing is based on load and load is a measurement uh, that's based on your cubic inches of your motor and your airflow coming into the engine as reported by the mass air meter. So if we go back to our side-by-side -side here, I can just pick any voltage, it doesn't matter. So let's say you're, you're down here at 0.884 volts. Stock meter, that would mean 24. Well, on this one, that means 58 kilograms per hour airflow, so substantially more airflow. But the computer doesn't understand this because it still thinks you're getting this much airflow and therefore you have a certain amount of load. So what this means is your, your load measurements are going to be off by a factor of this ratio depending on which one of these, these meters you've put in. So let me show you how big of a deal that is. So if we go into the tune, and today I'm, I'm actually using something a little different uh, that I've, I'm really enjoying and I've started working with recently. So this is, uh, this is still looking at a stock A9L calibration. Uh, but I'm using the core tuning strategies now, which are becoming very useful for me uh, because I'm starting to tune a lot of different cars. And uh, it's kind of cool because regardless of which strategy you're working with and what kind of car you're trying to tune, the way that all the things are kind of named and laid out over here on the left is very, very similar. So this is an awesome, uh, awesome way for somebody like me who's constantly bouncing between different strategies to just, uh, you know, make things easier for me. So. When you look in here, this is your, your sea level spark table. RPMs across the top, load across the left. So the idea in general is that the harder you're pushing your engine, the higher the load is. I'm not gonna get into all the specifics, but let's say you, your load is you know way up at 75. You say you're, you're, you're pushing the car pretty hard, whatever, and at this particular RPM, you'd have 18 degrees of timing. Well, if you put a 42 pound meter in here and you don't tune anything, then rather than having 75 load, we're gonna have that divided by this ratio. We're only gonna end up with 35 load because again, the voltage is going to be substantially less to get to a similar amount of airflow. So with the car seeing a less voltage, it's going to assume that you have you know, the stock's amount of air. So it, it's gonna perceive this as a substantially lower uh, load and lower airflow. So let's, let's see what happens. So factory would be at 75 load. With this, we'd be at about 35. So if I look on here, what that means is instead of having 18 degrees of timing, you're actually gonna be right between the two of these, which means you're gonna have like, you know, about 35, 36 degrees of timing. That is a substantial difference. And, you know, you could also argue that maybe that feels a little peppier because suddenly you have more timing, but this is not healthy at all. I mean, you're basically always going to be living in these bottom cells versus the top cells where you potentially would be when you're when you're on the car a little bit harder. So the result of this is is in almost all scenarios you're going to have less or, or substantially more timing than what you normally would have and that's not healthy for the car. So the other place that this is going to get messed up is uh, through your fuel calculations. And so from from a fuel standpoint when you look at your your open loop table this is also loosely based on load. It's technically something called per load. We can get into that in another video, but it's, it's similar to load and the effect of, of this calibrated meter is gonna be the same. 
whatever load you would normally be at. So if you were wide open throttle, you'd be you know up in this top row, and this is the commanded air to fuel ratio. So cool. But the problem is, if instead of being at in 90 per load, so we'll run the math on that. So equals that divided by our same ratio. So instead of 90 per load, we'd be at about 42 per load. And at 42 per load at wide open throttle, instead of being at a richer air to fuel ratio where you need to be safe, guess what? You're gonna be running basically at stoic. So you're gonna run super lean, you're gonna run with a lot more timing, and guess what that? That's a recipe for blowing head gaskets and screwing up your engine. So, you know, this is a big gap. I mean, going from a 19 pound setup to a 42 pound, that's not a small change. Uh, it's necessary for a blower. In fact, you might even wanna go bigger, to be honest. I don't know what heads cam intake you have, uh, but you might even need to go bigger than that. But 42 pound might get you by. But regardless of such a big change, this effect on your load calculation is very substantial and so much so that it might cause you some actual issues that you should be concerned with. Now, if you just step up to like a 24 pound, then this stuff is a lot less drastic. So in that case, you know, the numbers we would be looking at would be more like this. So, you know, uh, not, not as critical, but instead of 75 load, we'd be at 60, and instead of 90 per load, we'd be at 75. So going from 90 to 75, that's not likely to blow your engine up. And in fact, the, the stock computer runs honestly richer than you probably would want to at wide open throttle for a, a naturally aspirated combo. This, this might conveniently for a 24 pound setup put you better kind of closer in this range where you'd want to be. Uh, put you in the high 12s AFR, it'd probably run a little bit, uh, little bit better there. But going back to the spark table, you know, we would still have to be a little bit more concerned there. So if we were only at, you know, 60 load, then you know we'd be down here when we should be here and you get the idea you can work your way through the table so this is this is really the big concern is load calculations cannot be corrected ever with a calibrated math you must change the tune to tell it what the actual airflow values are for your actual voltage so that it can perform the load calculations correctly otherwise your sparks off your fuels off now i'm going to throw in one more thing just because of how big of a jump you're making here to these 42 pounds or 60s or whatever um, there's one other consideration that this might screw you up. So in the tunes, there is a setting that determines what's a minimum acceptable voltage coming through that mass air meter, because ultimately if you're barely getting any voltage reading on that, it's assumed that the mass air sensor has failed, uh, which is common, uh, that can happen. But there's a, there's a threshold point where you say, well, what is that voltage where if I'm reading less than this, it's bad, and if I'm above it, it must be operating okay. And uh, that's, that's controlled here in your tune. So right here, this values the minimum voltage this will recognize before failing the math. It's at 0.37 volts. Now, on, on a stock setup, 0.37 volts is, I mean, that's super, super low. So from a flow standpoint, you know, you're, you're basically as low as it can read at that point, which is probably going to be right here around, uh, you know, 12 or 13 kilograms per hour. And something I wanted to show you is I actually have a good log from something that's a personal car of mine that at the time this log was taken, it was a bone stock engine. I'm talking pan to throttle body, stock math, stock injectors, I mean bone stock. And I was just kind of getting everything hooked up with the quarter horse and some other things before I started making changes for boost. And so at idle, what you'll see here is we're kind of in this range right here. So this was coming from a stop, it kind of coasted down and then right in here, this is a true warm idle. And if you look at my, my voltage, it's idling at about 0 0.92, 0 0.91, 0 0.93 volts. And from an airflow perspective, it's at about 25 kilograms per hour. So that's at warm idle. If, if we go back to our, our data here, 25 kilograms flow, that right there, you're kind of seeing around 0 0.9 volts. Cool. So with this meter, where am I going to be to get the same amount of airflow with the 42 pound? Well, I would actually be hovering somewhere between here and here. 25 is kind of right between 20 and 30. So from a voltage standpoint, I'm probably hovering somewhere around point, you know, 0.4 volts. Notice how close that is to our threshold point of 0.37 volts where it's gonna fail that math. So if you have even just a little dip here and there, which happens just from various driving characteristics, now you might be even throwing a, a problem with your engine because it's gonna think the math failed. When the math fails, 
then it's going to go into a whole other set of logic where it's going to quit trying to read it. It's going to jump over and just try to make decisions based on the throttle position sensor. And uh, again, it's, it's just not going to run its best, and it certainly is not going to be healthy at wide open throttle. So these are some really legitimate concerns uh, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about using a calibrated math and why you may not want to do that. So guys, if you have any more questions, uh, just let me know on this, but these are kind of the basics of why you will need a tune, uh, regardless of if you have a perfect match between you know, your, your injector size and your calibrated math. So appreciate it again. Good luck, Godspeed.